My name is David Tanaka. I was a university student when Canada celebrated its 100th birthday in 1967. All across the country, communities were working on centennial projects to mark the event. Lester B. Pearson, who was the Prime Minister of Canada at the time, said Lethbridge's Nikayuko Japanese Garden was the most unique and imaginative centennial project. Unique and imaginative for sure, but it might seem a bit odd that a small prairie city would choose to build a Japanese garden to celebrate Canada's 100th birthday. However, the Nikkei have a long history in this area. Around 1900, men from Okinawa came here to work as railroad construction workers and coal miners. They eventually established a community in Hardyville, which is now part of Lethbridge. Around the same time, a group of Japanese men from various parts of the country came to the town of Raymond to work as laborers in the sugar factory. Some stayed, acquired land, and became farmers. The Raymond Nikkei built the first Buddhist temple east of the Rocky Mountains in 1929, and it became the social hub for the community for the next several decades. Before World War II, there were roughly 500 Nikkei living in southern Alberta. That number jumped dramatically during World War II. The Canadian government declared people of Japanese ancestry as enemy aliens, and roughly 22,000 Nikkei living in coastal areas of British Columbia were forced to leave their homes. Most were housed in camps in the interior of the province. Around 370 families, given assurances that they could stay together as family units if they became farm laborers, moved to southern Alberta to work in the sugar beet fields. So virtually overnight, the number of Nikkei living in southern Alberta grew from less than 500 to nearly 3,000. After the war, many of the displaced Nikkei left the area. However, many stayed and built successful lives here for themselves and their children. Until the 1980s, the area around Lethbridge had the third largest Nikkei population in Canada. In the 1960s, a few Nikkei leaders, such as Reverend Yetetsu Kawamura, who came to Raymond Temple in 1934, thought that a Japanese garden would be nice for this area. Civic leaders, including the mayor of Lethbridge, the head of the local chamber of commerce, the editor of the local daily newspaper, and a few successful businessmen, all non-Japanese, agreed. So the garden was created in the best spirit of Canadian multiculturalism. And I think it remains an icon of that ideal. The overall design of Nikayuko was done by Professor Kubo of Osaka Prefecture University. The wooden structures were built in Kyoto in an architectural style known as Sukiya. Both Professor Kubo and his student, Dr. Sugimoto, who was the on-site architect during the garden's construction, say that it is a Canadian garden in the Japanese style. A subtle but important distinction. The garden was designed and is maintained using Japanese aesthetic principles, but it celebrates the landscape of this part of Canada, which includes mountains and foothills, forests and streams, lakes and rivers, as well as short grass prairie. When Nikayuko opened, it was still rare to see signs of Japanese culture outside the Nikkei community. In the last 50 years, that's changed dramatically. Japan has become an economic giant, and Japanese culture is embraced all over the world. And Nikayuko's original intent as a symbol of friendship between Japan and Canada is as relevant as ever.